The top stories tonight in Y News. Get to know the situations in cemeteries and the status of travelers for today's holiday. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. visits the typhoon worst hit Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. The updates about the latest number of deaths due to the onslaught of severe tropical storm Paeng. And former Afghan soldiers reveal Russia's alleged recruitment of former Afghan special forces to fight in Ukraine. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, the 1st of November, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Harleen Delgado. First in the news, the Philippine National Police will remain on full alert status until November 4. PNP spokesperson Police Colonel Jean Fajardo said, although the long holiday will end today, the PNP will stretch their full deployment until November 4 in anticipation of the full implementation of the mandatory face-to-face -face classes. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. The Philippine National Police wants to ensure the safety of the students for the full implementation of face-to-face -face classes starting tomorrow. This is why the PNP will remain on full alert status until November 4. PNP spokesperson Police Colonel Jean Fajardo said the PNP will install police assistance desks near school building to assist students, parents and teachers. Ating concentration ngayon ng ating uh, deployment, particularly itong ang uh, naasahan nating simula ng face-to-face -face classes ay dito sa Metro Manila. Kaya yung ating uh, full alert status ay mananatili hanggang November 4 in anticipation nga nitong simula ng face-to-face. -face. Subalit, uh, ang ating mga field commanders, particularly yung ating mga regional uh, directors are given full discretion po para i-extend po itong uh, heightened uh, alert status natin. Colonel Fajardo ensure that the PNP will remain on their areas of deployment to ensure the safety of the public. Sahan niyo po ang PNP ay mananatili doon po sa kanila mga pre-designated areas para siguraduhin po na prepared po tayo na mag-provide ng 24-7 security and other public safety services sa ating mga kababayan. Aside from securing the full implementation of face-to-face -face classes, the PNP personnel are also helping the affected residents of Typhoon Paeng and also preparing for Typhoon Queenie. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Visitors at the Manila South Cemetery in Makati City reached over 204,000, a huge number compared to the number of visitors yesterday. Meanwhile, authorities of Manila South Cemetery remind parents to bring the vaccination cards of their children. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. More than 204,000 individuals visited the Manila South Cemetery and authorities reported zero untoward incident. One collapsed victim was reported but was immediately given medical attention. 888 cigarettes, 526 lighters, and 8 sharp objects were confiscated during the security inspection. The Manila South Cemetery strictly implements not allowing children 5 to 11 years old to enter without vaccination card. Jonathan Garzo, director of Manila South Cemetery, reiterates that children with no vaccination card will have to stay at the waiting area. We're very strict with the protocol pagdating po dun sa 12 years below. Kung hindi po talaga bakunado, hindi po talaga namin iaalaw na sumama o pumasok po sa loob. Some parents lament that they were not aware of the said protocol. Director Garzo, meanwhile, clarified that advisories were being posted to inform visitors. He also reminds parents visiting tomorrow to bring the vaccination card of their children in order to avoid inconvenience. Patuloy naming sinasabi, paulit-ulit naman po kami sa aming pronouncement na kailangan po magpakita po ng proof of vaccination. Ngayon po, nagkaroon ng ano kanina, claiming that, the, that the, her child is more, is more than 12 years old, pero wala rin mong mapakita ng, ano eh, ng proof na talagang more than 12 years old siya. 
The public was also reminded that Manila South Cemetery opens at 5 a.m. and closes at 5 p.m. This is amid the number of visitors who were not able to make it on time. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the expected crowd at the Loyola Memorial Park in Marikina City this November 1 dropped in figures despite easier health restrictions. J.P. Nunez explains why. As of 5 p.m., there are only 7,500 estimated crowd who visited Loyola Memorial Park in Marikina City. The management of the cemetery and the Marikina police said it was much lower than 90,000 people who flocks during November 1 holiday. The management noted that there were early visitors last weekend while Marikina police chief said expected visitors might have been affected by the typhoon Paeng. Compared to pre-pandemic, ito po ay nakapap, napakababa. Uh, kahapon, ganun din, almost the same yung number. As visitors in the cemetery is much lower, other visitors set up their tents as protection from rain due to inclement weather condition. No, wala naman masyadong tao, tsaka maluwag. Makikita niyo yung sasakyan, nakakaikot pa. Unlike last year, Marikina LGU allowed minors inside the cemetery and vaccination cards were not required. Okay naman ang ano, at least hindi na masyadong mahigpit, nakakapasok na ang mga tao. Hindi kumpara noon na talagang mahigpit. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. wants no bureaucracy in providing assistance to those affected by natural calamities. PBBM has also ordered the drafting of Standard Operating Procedures or SOP for the inclusion of medicines in relief packages. Mel Maribohok will tell us why. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. told the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM officials and his cabinet members to ensure immediate distribution of relief goods as well as to make their standard operating procedures more efficient. During the situation briefing in Bagindanao, the President recalled his experience when tickets were being used during the distribution of relief goods to victims of Super Typhoon Yolanda, which severely hit the Central Philippines in 2013. He learned then that a ticket was needed for the victims to get assistance from the local government. I ko yung barangay captain. <laughs> Sabi ko, bakit ni ticket? Sabi niya, baka magdoble. Eh, ano kung magdoble? Bigay nyo na lang lahat. Just give everything. Hindi na ba, hindi, iyayaman ba yung tao na meron nakadoble siya na food pack? Hindi iyayaman. <laughs> hindi, hindi, it just means he will eat, they will, the family will eat for another two days, three days. So, wag na natin masyadong intindihin yung bureaucracy. Basta para tingin natin yung relief, alam mo, naghihingalo yung tao eh. Life and death na sa kanila ito eh. So wag na tayo magantay na may ticket. According to the president, there was nothing with it because people would get more relief packs to ensure they could still even eat in the following days. Bilisan na lang natin. The point of all these relief goods is um, to get as much relief goods as to go to rescue immediately, as much relief goods as a uh, wag na nating intindihin. Hindi niyo, there is no such thing as sobra na relief goods. The chief executive also ordered the drafting of a standard operating procedure or SOP for the inclusion of medicines in relief packages. He also stressed the importance of providing maintenance medicines during calamities. So let, let's, let's put together an SOP with that, for that. Yes, para may, may kasama na tayong gamot. Meron na tayong health kit. Pero yung gamot talaga ang uh, after after a few after a few days that is be, that becomes a you know, it becomes an issue. We're going to sit down and oh, uh, probably secret. change that policy oh. para may include na po doon sa relief yung mga hmm. paracetamol tama po kayo uh, mga diarrhea uh, fever 
Prior to the situation briefing, the President, together with other government officials, conducted an aerial inspection over Maguindanao Province. He also led the distribution of the Department of Social Welfare and Development Assistance to those affected by the typhoon at Datu Odin Sinsuat in Maguindanao. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Severe tropical storm Paeng affected more than 4 million customers of the Manila Electric Company or Meralco. But the power giant assured that they fast-tracked power restoration activities to have it completed within the day. As of 9 o'clock a.m. today, there are 13,168 remaining affected customers in the last part of restoration. The majority of those who suffered power interruptions are still in Laguna and the rest are in Quezon. Bulacan, Batangas, Cavite, Rizal, and Metro Manila. Meralco explained there are still few isolated areas because of flooding. They are now on the last part of the power restoration and will be able to restore the services to the remaining customers the soonest possible time. According to the National Electrification Administration, they expect that the complete restoration of power services is possible within this week. Meanwhile, the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines, or NGCP, continues the restoration of damaged transmission lines and towers to restore power service in affected areas. Former Afghan soldiers revealed that Russia is currently recruiting thousands of the former Afghan special forces to form a foreign legion to fight in Ukraine. Afghan soldiers who are tempted by the offer said they don't want to fight but had no choice. Lerisa Dando reports why live. Lerisa? Good evening, Cash. The Russian mercenary force Wagner Group is allegedly recruiting former elite Afghan commandos who fear of deportation to Afghanistan. Three former Afghan generals told the Associated Press the soldiers are offered a steady monthly payment of $1,500 and promises of safe havens for themselves and their families. Former Afghan General Abdul Rauf Argandiwal stated that the soldiers do not have other options as they will be killed once they return to Afghanistan. This former Afghan commandos fought alongside with American troops and then fled to Iran last year after the U.S. troops completed their withdrawal and abandoned the Afghan soldiers. Much of the Russian recruitment is focused on the Afghan city of Tehran and Mashhad, where many have fled, according to former Afghan army chief Alizai. The Russian recruiting team, however, did not confirm the ongoing recruitment and dismissed the idea as crazy nonsense. Meanwhile, a GAP congressional report warned of the danger that the Afghan soldiers might end up revealing information about U.S. tactics to Iran or Russia or fight for them. Thank you, Nerisa Dando, for that live report. South Korean authorities admit they had no guidelines to deal with the massive crowds that gathered during the tragic Halloween festivities in Seoul. The death toll from the crowd crush that occurred on the night of October 29 rises to 156. All of the victims have been identified as the families and the country mourn this one of its worst ever disasters. Meanwhile, questions have emerged criticizing the government's handling of the incident and the lack of crowd control before it happened. Some eyewitnesses and survivors reveal few or no police visibility in the area. Authorities vowed an in-depth investigation and assured new safety measures to prevent the same incident from occurring again. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Kat. More than 200 school buildings were damaged by severe tropical storm Paeng. The Department of Education reported that as of October 31 assessment, 261 schools sustained infrastructure damage due to continuous heavy rains and floods. There are 528 schools currently being used as evacuation centers, Deped added. The, evacu the Education Department will also give consideration to public schools affected by the typhoon and massive earthquake to implement blended learning. Authorities extend opening hours of the Manila North Cemetery today. 
Meanwhile, UN TV News and Rescue provides medical aid to some visitors of the cemetery. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. About 225,000 people visited the Manila North Cemetery during the holiday based on the data gathered by the Manila Police District. But as its gate closes at 4.30 p.m., few more people continue to arrive the cemetery. With this, authorities, particularly MPD personnel, let the gate open until 5.30 p.m. MPD Director Police Brigadier General Andre Dizon explains the limited hours is for everyone's safety as well. Basically, ang uh, purpose ng ating uh, city government kaya hanggang 5 lang is uh, we are still in uh, on a uh, pandemic period. Uh, so, para safe ang lahat, pagsapit ng dilim, nasa kanika nilang mga tahanan na. Meanwhile, some of the visitors ask for medical aid from the UNTV News and Rescue team designated in the vicinity of the cemetery. Most complain of dizziness due to the weather condition. Then <laughs> Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Some stranded passengers in Northport Passenger Terminal in Manila are expected to have their voyage this evening. Dante Amento tells us why. Passengers who have been stranded at the Manila Northport Passenger Terminal will leave tonight. They stayed in the terminal for several days since last Friday, October 28, after their voyage was cancelled. Some of them are bound to cities of Bacolod, Iloilo, and Cagayan de Oro City. Pagdating ng alas 8, hindi na kami pinapalabas. Hindi kami makakabili. Kailangan gutom talaga kami. Gutom. Wala kaming pera kasi ganun na. Uyari. Some of them said, though their vacation is already shortened due to the delay, what most important is they can leave. Sa Bacolod, ados na yata, bukas na mga alas, tangali yata. Kung alis mamaya, malas dos, mga tangali din yung dating namin doon. The next trip of passenger vessels from Manila to other provinces would be on Thursday, November 3. Meanwhile, the cargo operation in Manila port is already back to normal operations. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several last-minute passengers flocked to various transport terminals today to avoid the expected influx of travelers in the coming days. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. Passengers began to throng the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange or PITX at noon today, November 1. Despite rains, there were plenty of buses coming in, but some bus trips were eventually cancelled. Several passengers decided to travel today following the series of cancellation of trips over the weekend due to severe tropical storm Paeng. Some worry that tropical storm Queenie might impede their travel. Naisipan kong bumiyahe ngayon kasi nung nakaraang bumagyo po, dapat nung nakaraan pa, kaso nga bumagyo po. So, walang biyahe yung mga barko. Para wala po masyadong pasayero kasi yung iba, nung nakaraang araw pa, yun po ngayon yung kinakatakot namin eh. Baka abutin kami ng bagyo sa daan. Police forces at the terminal expect the influx of returning passengers to begin tomorrow, November 2. Last November 1 kasi nung past year, ma'am, talagang maraming tao. Nag-average siya ng ano, 60, 70,000. Cold noon pa lang. Ngayon po na may bagyo ma'am, medyo talagang ano, nag-decrease po yung bilang ng mga passengers natin. 
PITX spokesperson Jason Salvador said yesterday's passenger count reached 109,000. Meanwhile, no flight cancellation was recorded today at the Nino Aquino International Airport or Naia. Some passengers are trying to make it before the November holiday ends, while some have been to their provinces and are now on their way back home. We talaga namin para makahabol kami sa undas. Sana walang aberya. Kasi mas convenient kasi uh, kailangan din namin bumalik agad kasi pag after na undas, medyo marami na rin yung ano pasahero. Minove yung ano, yung move yung uh, date ng pag-alis ko kasi yun nga, sa dami ng mga na-cancel na mga flights. Timing lang din na ano na Hoping na hindi siya madaming uuwi, although alam kong undas nga siya. Records from the Manila International Airport Authority or MIAA show that yesterday's passenger count from domestic flights reached almost 69,000, while international travelers reached 43,000. Yesterday's number of local travelers was way higher than of 2021, with 17,000 and even pre-pandemic with over 61,000. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Camera assault suspect of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband has been charged with multiple offenses after breaking into their home Friday night. Ia Devera will tell us why, live. Yes, Ia? Kath David Depap broke into the elderly couple's home Friday night with the intention of kidnapping Democrat House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, take her hostage for questioning, and destroy her kneecaps all prior to the United States midterm elections. The U.S. Department of Justice charged Depap with assault and attempted kidnapping since attacking Nancy's husband Paul Pelosi with a hammer after finding out that the official was not home at that time. Upon further investigation on his arrest on Monday, the Justice Department confirmed they secured several pieces of weapons the suspect would have used during his attack, including a second pair of hammer and zip ties. U.S. President Joe Biden condemned the hatred against U.S. politics, speaking for the 82-year-old veteran who has been a subject for subject of criticism for years. Further, multiple charges were separately filed in the San Francisco Superior Court, including attempted murder, assault using deadly weapon, elder, elder abuse, burglary, and threatening a public official. Depap faces a sentence of up to 20 years if convicted on these charges. Kath? Thank you, Ia Rivera, for that live report. Data from the National Health Service, or NHS, shows that the number of qualified family doctors in London have fallen despite a growing number of patients. Maven Dog will give us the details live. Maeve? Kath, from September 2017 to 2022, the number of full-time general practitioners or GPs in London fell by 3%, while the number of patients rose by 10% in the same period. The, the NHS registered a total of 10,733,640 patients for surgeries as of last month, with the number of patients aged 75 and over who are more likely to use the health service also increasing by more than 50,000. Director of Primary Care at the NHS Confederation Ruth Rankin stated that in order to meet the growing demand, there should be a clear plan on retaining as many GPs as possible, as well as recruiting and training more practitioners. A recent study by the King's Fund found that almost two-thirds of trainee GPs plan to work part-time a year after being qualified, and more than 78% stating they prefer part-time over full-time work due to the intense working days. Ms. Rankin has called on the new Prime Minister and Chancellor to urgently address the chronic staff shortage across the NHS and to develop a fully funded workforce plan. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Maven Dog reporting live. Social media platform Twitter plans to charge its verified users $20 a month to keep the blue tick on their accounts and they have 90 days to do so, according to some reports in the U.S. 
Although there hasn't been any comments about the plans, Twitter's new owner Elon Musk said that the whole verification process is currently being revamped. Using the Twitter subscription service Twitter Blue, where the social media platform charges $4.99 a month to its subscribers, which might be increased to $20 a month to accommodate its verified users. Twitter Blue, which is currently available in the U.S., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, allows their subscribers to edit, customize, or undo their tweets and in the future, to be used to verify the identity of its users. Verified users go through a system to help its patrons identify authentic and influential users in Twitter, such as government officials, celebrities, media personalities, major brands, and organizations. These users need to have a name, image, confirmed email address, active within the last six months, and should adhere to Twitter's rules. Mr. Musk, owner of Tesla and SpaceX, completed a $44 billion takeover of Twitter last week and is also planning to bring back Vine, a short-form video application like TikTok, which was shut down in 2016. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I'm Kat Tumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. The state's National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRMC, reported a death toll from the severe tropical storm Paeng, climbed to 112 today. Meanwhile, 34 individuals are still missing. NDRMC added that 82 of these deaths have been confirmed and 30 are still for validation. Based on the toll, the reported fatalities in Barm, 61 deaths, Region 6 with 18 fatalities, and 3 in Region 12. NDRMC also reported that 103 individuals were injured, 65 of these were confirmed injured, and 38 are still for validation. Their assessment also revealed that 751,800 families or 2,491,316 persons were affected by the typhoon. Almost 52,541 families or 189,392 persons are staying at 2,724 evacuation centers, while 278,562 families or 691,100 persons are staying outside evacuation centers it added our kasang bahay as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus we are inviting everyone to join the global prayer for humanity good day i'm brother eli soriano of the members of the church of god international i want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention and we need his intervention now more than ever it doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong this is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family friends loved ones and humanity as a whole everybody is welcome to pray with us for more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. And before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God. From the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 10, it says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom, in the grave whither thou goest.
reasons behind the news November 1, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harney Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.